Secretary Austin, the United States has appropriated $112 billion previously for Ukraine aid, $60 billion in the supplemental that's being considered. Uh, based on this budget, am I to assume then that as of September 30th, there will be no more Ukraine aid from the United States? This, uh, this request takes us out uh, through the end of month, September. Uh, right, but there's no... There's no money, so there, I can only be left to assume one of three things. One is the war is over. Two, or B, um, the United States won't be allocating any more dollars. Or C, that this is a dishonest request. So I guess the question is, are, are we going to – it's not in this, but we're going to get another supplemental because members of this committee have been told there could be an, another request for $100 billion. So I guess I'm just trying to understand the totality of the request to the American people for this war that does not seem to be re represented in this request. Well, I assure you that the request is not dishonest, uh, Senator. It's, uh, it's based upon, uh, for this fiscal year, what, uh, what we see uh, Ukraine needs and our ability to provide security assistance and, and, and replenish our, uh, our stocks. And again, this is not... Uh, this goes through our industrial base. I understand, I understand the argument, but I would also make the argument that the weapons that are being procured for Ukraine aren't necessarily the weapons that our industrial base would produce to defend the United States or even in the Indo-Pacific. Those are more long-range fires. That's really not what Ukraine needs. And so with an industrial base that's, that does not have the capacity to do all of these things, we are making decisions about what is produced and what is sold and those may not be in the interest of the United States. I mean, you, you understand the point? I, I do, Senator, and I think you're right. I think, you know, there are munitions that we will need for uh, a peer competitor uh, fight that, uh, that we're not using in, in Ukraine right now. But having said that, um, Ukraine needs uh, air defense capabilities, uh, uh, weapons, uh, uh, systems, and interceptors. It needs artillery munitions. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, our industrial base produces all of that, and we have worked to expand our capacity in our industrial base to, uh, to pr produce uh, anti-tank weapon systems. Um, you know. I, appreciate, I appreciate the point. I don't mean to cut you off. I just, as you heard, I have limited time. I just want to get through a couple more questions. So what does victory look like for Ukraine? Yeah. How do you define victory? Uh, you, you may have heard me say this earlier, uh, Senator, but... Um, we've said from the very beginning that what we want to see is a Ukraine that's, uh, that's a, a democratic country that, has, uh, that, that, that is uh, independent uh, and, uh, and has the ability to protect its sovereign territory, to defend its sovereign territory, and to, 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 to deter aggression. Does that mean Crimea is part of Ukraine? Crimea is a part of Ukraine. Well, sir. okay. Right, but in order for the war to be over, does, Crimea, does Ukraine have to control Crimea? In terms of how things transition uh, going forward, uh, you know, I, I would not uh, want to predict what President Zelensky will, will decide. I think uh, part of the problem, with all due respect, is that um, this administration has not articulated what an exit strategy is. To me, this is a blank check for a war that without any clearly defined goals will be endless. Um, and that is, so the skepticism among, I didn't vote for the supplemental because I don't think that we've, we don't have adequate controls on how the money's being spent. Victory hasn't been defined. So for America's interest, I understand America's interest, we're, we're continuing to head down this road and now we're getting a budget request that does, isn't reflective of the administration's for however long it takes statement. Um, so that's, that's part of the objection. I guess one of the issues too is, and I want to make sure I'm clear, is that the administration's position that Ukraine should be admitted into NATO? It's NATO's position overall that... Uh, you, no, the United States of America. What is the administration's position on Ukraine's admission to NATO? I think you've heard the president say that, uh, and of course, NATO has an, an open door policy, so... Uh, it, it, all of the countries have worked uh, towards... Uh, I'm really not trying to put you in a weird spot. I just heard Secretary Blinken say 
or maybe it was a mistranslation, so I'm just looking for clarity. If it's the position of the United States of America that Ukraine should be admitted into NATO. It, was that question as to whether or not they should be admitted right now or in the future? That, well, either that, or. Well, right now they're in a war, Senator. So right, so that would be a disastrous result because we would go to war. That's right. Right. That's right. Um, but let's say the war ends tomorrow. That's what all. Or that's September 30th, based on this budget, is ends September 30th. Is it the position of this administration that Ukraine should be admitted into NATO? It's unlikely that the war will end on September 30th, but but uh, um, again, it, it's it's the goal of the uh, of the alliance to to, to bring uh, Ukraine into the alliance at some point in the future. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator